Welcome to another edition of Visual X Masterclass. You are with Mr. Kanyele here. We'll be doing paper one today, a topic called probability. This topic is important. It used to be paper three uh, before, now it's embedded back into paper one. That's the last question in your examination. If you do well in probability, you are likely to do well in your overall paper. At the end of the year, it will be about 15 marks. Uh, this section so it's important it can determine whether you get your A or you get your 30 percent uh, what is probability probability is a chance of something happening uh, if 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 I if I flip a coin there is 50 percent that I will be getting a head and also 50 percent that I'll be getting a tail so th that's what probability is it, it predicts what uh, the chances of something happening or not happening. Hence the probability can be represented in, in, in a percentage, it can be represented as a, a fraction, it can be represented as a decimal fraction. Mm, probability is always between zero and one. You can't find a, a probability above one. It is always between zero and one. Once you start when you calculate probability and you find solutions that are above one, then you must know that there's something wrong. Uh, if you want to master this section, you've got to master this uh, skeleton that I've, I've made for you. You've got to know your Venn diagram. Number two, you've got to know your tree diagram. Number three, you've got to know this rule called the additional rule. Probability of A or probability of, probability of A or B is called to probability of A plus probability of B minus probability of A and B, which is of course our intersection. Mutually ex exclusive events, it means there is no intersection. This probability of A and B, it becomes zero. So there is no intersection for mutually exclusive events, no intersection. If this is event A, this would be event B. There is nowhere where the two events interact, no intersection. So the intersection is zero, it's not there. Complementary events, probability of A, plus probability of B is equal to 1. Probability of A plus probability of B is 1. If, if I make an example, if, if you look at Kaiser Chiefs, for example, let's say Kaiser Chiefs has got 20 players. How many players will be playing in the game? About 11. How many players will be reserves? About 9. But the players that are playing and the players that are not playing, which are the reserves, but together they form only one team. Probability of A plus probability of B is equal to 1. Others, they will say probability of A plus probability of not A. It means the probability of B is equal to 1. This can be manipulated. manipulated. The question might say is find the probability of not A. The probability of not A is probability of B. So if I'm looking for the probability of not A, I'm looking for probability of B. So it will be equal to, you find one this side minus probability of A. So it is important that even if you manipulate this, it should mean the same thing. Um, independent events, probability of A and B is equal to probability of A times B. That's where you, we, you have to prove the independent events. We'll also be touching on the contingency table in this section, which is also important. Then lastly, we'll be dealing with uh, uh, fundamental counting principles. We'll try and do, let me start with this one. We'll take whatever we're doing so that we'll know where we are. I want us to start with, briefly with a tree diagram. We'll, we'll do two of these, then we'll go to, to the Venn diagram. Uh, uh, like any tree, a tree has got uh, branches. We'll also be talking about branches in this, in this section. I want us to look at the question that was set in the exemplar 2014. Uh, it says two identical beds are filled with balls. We've got two bags here that are filled with balls. Bag A contains three pink and two yellow balls. We've got two bags. There's bag A, there's bag B. And bag B contains five pink and four yellow balls. It is equally likely that bag A or bag B is chosen. Each ball has equal chance of being chosen from the bag. A bag is chosen at random and the ball is chosen at random from the bag. Represent the above information by means of a tree diagram and write down all the outcomes. I, I want us to do that. It's about between four and five marks in the examination. Two identical bags, bags A and B. I've, I know that I've got two bags. 
I've got two bags. Uh, I've got bag A and I've got bag B. I've got these two bags and they are identical. Two identical bags are filled with balls. It is important that when, when, we, when we do this uh, tree diagram, when I add these branches, I must always get one. Are we together? Whenever you add this and this, it should give us one. Because if, if I flip a coin, the, 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 if I flip a coin, I might either get a head or a tail. What is the probability of getting a head? It is 0 0.5. What is the probability of getting a tail? It is 0 0.5 or half. Let me just say half, it's the same thing. We usually use this format, it's half. When you add this two, you must get one. So it is always like that. When you add the branches, they must always give us one. These two will give us the outcomes. We'll be dealing with outcomes when, 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 as we respond to this question. Now, this one says, Two identical bags filled with balls contains three pink. This is bag A, this is bag B. Let me just take this a bit down so that it will make sense to us. I've got two bags, bag A and bag B. I'm getting that from my first sentence there. Bag A contains three pink and two yellow. Back A, this in back A, I've got how many? I've got uh, back A contains three pink, there's pink and yellow balls. Yellow balls. That's what we have in back A. Right, let's put, let's put some branches. Let's go to these branches and see what we have. Two identical bags are filled with balls. Back A contains three pink in bag A, how many bags do we have in bag A? Let's check that. In bag A, we've got three pink and two yellow balls. We've got three pink and two yellow balls. In total, how many bags do we have? We've got five. In this bag A, we've got five balls. Three of them are pink and two of them are yellow. So, how many pink balls do we have? Uh, three pink balls. We've got three. Out of how many? Out of five balls. And on the, uh, on, on, on the same back, we've got how many yellow? We've got two yellow balls. You've got two. Out of how many? Out of five. I'm trying to emphasize the fact that if, 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 if I'm given, let me just see, three out of five and two out of five. Right. Even if they, they would have given me this information, you can't be able to find this other branch. Because when I add this two, I must get one. What is three plus two? It is five. They are all over five. So five over five is one. So if they say this is three over five, I should know that one should be two over five so that I'll get one when I add those two. Right. That's what we have in bag A. I repeat, bag A, con bag A contains three uh, pink balls out of five and bag A also contains two yellow balls out of five. That's what we have there. Back B, then I go to back B. What are they saying about back B? Back B contains, uh, what does it have? Back B contains five pink and four yellow balls. Ah, in back B, how many balls do we have in total? Let's read the statement again. Back, uh, back B contains five pink and four yellow balls. So in, in back B, we've got nine in total. So back B contains five pink how many pink? It is five over nine. I don't have to be told about these yellow balls now because I'll, it has to be four over nine. Exactly, it is four over nine. At times we will confuse you. Instead of writing four over nine, we'll have a statement that will be talked. If I multiply this by two, it will be eight over 18. 8 over 18 is the same as 4 over 9. We should not be confused by such statements. Uh, it is equally likely that a bag A or B is chosen. 50-50 chances of these bags to be to be chosen. So it means that I can have 50% here, which is one, half and also half. And when I add this, I get one. 
when I add these branches, I get one. When I add those branches, I'll get one. It is equal likely that peg A or B is chosen, and each one has an equal chance of being chosen from peg A from the back. A peg is chosen at random, and then a pod is chosen at random from the back. Represent the above information by means of a tree diagram. This is what we call a tree diagram, and when you check it, this must be one, this must give us one, and that must give us one. It further says, by means of a tree diagram, and write down all the outcomes. Now that we need to, 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 to write our outcomes here. Outcomes, you follow your branches. Look at, at the first outcome. From here we started the A, then we got P. From the outcome that we get here is called AP, which is the same as 1 over 2 times 3 over 5. That is the outcome that you get from this one. You multiply it along the branches. The next one, the next outcome from here, I started from AP. The next outcome will be AY. So this is AY. How do you multiply? How do you get the outcome here? It will be 1 over 2. You multiply the branches and 2 times 2 over 5. That's how I'll go about multiplying these branches. We'll call these the outcomes. The next outcome will be BP. B, P. If you want the probability, it will be 1 over 2 times 5 over 9. The last outcome will be B times Y, which will give us what is the branch there? It is 1 over 2 times what? 4 over 9. Right, that's how we'll go about finding these outcomes. And you'll get full marks for writing this tree diagram. What was important here is to realize that there are five balls in back B and there are about nine balls, I mean in back A, and there are about nine balls in back B. So that's how you go about doing the tree diagram. I want us to do one more tree diagram while, while it's still fresh in our minds so that we can continue to do uh, more problems.